Have you ever asked yourself, what is masking fluid? Why do we have to use it in watercolour painting? When do we use it in watercolour painting? How do we apply it? How do we take it off? Do we have to even use it in watercolour painting? What happens when we can't get it off our brushes? All these questions I hope to answer in this tutorial. I'm Karen Rice and welcome to my YouTube channel. I would like to share with you the knowledge that I have gained through watercolour teaching over the years about masking fluid. And I really hope you're going to find it helpful and useful. So, shall we get started? What is masking fluid? It's kind of like a latex based product that is very good at keeping small tricky areas white when you're painting on watercolour paper. As you can see here with these daisies that I painted and you can, if you like this painting, there is a tutorial and I'll put a link for this in the description below, but I use masking fluid here to paint around these tricky areas so that the masking fluid prevents the paint from reaching the paper when you have it on. And once everything's dry and you finish painting around these tricky areas, you can peel off the masking fluid to reveal the white paper underneath. Here's an example of where I don't use masking fluid and it's in these white areas here because they're a bit larger they weren't too fiddly to paint round, and so in this instance, I didn't use masking fluid. How I buy masking fluid is I either buy these little pots of masking fluid. So, just open that up, and you've got, it's all liquid. There is about, I think it's 45 mil here. So I buy them in these little pots. You can get them in bigger containers as well. But I like to buy them no bigger than this, because I find it goes off after a while, even with my a lot of usage of it. So in pots like that, that's PBO, but there's other brands as well. Or I buy these masking pens as well. And you, if you see a lot of my YouTube videos, I use this masking pen. I find it really, really useful. Right. Before we use the pen, there's a cartridge in here. Give it a good shake, okay? And I usually give it a little tap on the side just to release it. And then let's just do a day, let's just paint a daisy here. I haven't actually drawn it, but I'm just going to paint a daisy in there so you can sort of see the difference like that. And it just goes on nicely. It, um, what I find about this is the main thing is that it's very easy to use. Okay, it comes out quite nicely, dries really quickly. It's very good at not having any mess. Look, there's no mess here. It's come out. I've just painted it on there like that. Brilliant. Okay. There are a couple of downsides about this. One is that obviously the amount of masking fluid you get in here compared to what you get in here per mil is a lot cheaper buying it this way. And the other thing is that this comes out into sort of a thin layer and it works really well. The only thing is I find it's quite tricky to take it off afterwards. That's the only thing. It's just a little bit harder. You have to work. It does come off, but it just takes a little bit longer. So that's the pros and cons of the pen. The pros and cons of using the masking fluid in the pot are, I would say the first thing is applying it. Because obviously with the pen, you've got the nib and you can apply it. Okay, the first thing is that is what to apply it with. And there's lots of different things that you can use. Um, the first thing is to use a brush. So here's my brush. Oh, it's a good sable brush this. So I don't want to ruin it. Now my advice is never use a sable brush, but I'm going to use this as an example. I'm taking a risk. So here's my sable brush. The first thing you do is you protect your brush. And I've got liquid soap in here. So I cover it with the liquid soap and that acts as a barrier while I'm using the masking fluid. So I'm going to dip my brush into the masking fluid. Now why I find sometimes using a brush easier, because you can sort of cover large areas. Now you've got your lovely daisy. Remember you can do thin lines like that. I'll do one there as well. So while my brush has got the liquid soap on the masking that it's been protected, if you ri rinse it, remember if you use the masking fluid again, dip it into the liquid soap, otherwise it's unprotected. There we are. Just rinse that all off. 
take that off there and you can see my brush there's a little bit of a residue there but they, there's no masking fluid on that brush what happens is if you dip it into your masking fluid without the protection of the liquid soap once it dries it's really difficult to remove the masking fluid but if that happens to you I have made a video about how to remove masking fluid from brushes and you can find a link for that in the description below I also use my twig this is an ordinary twig from the garden I've sharpened it with a pencil sharpener and now I'm going to dip it in to the masking fluid and what you get here is some very beautiful thin lines so it's ideal for masking fluid this ideal and you just wipe it clean afterwards like that the other thing you can use these rubber tip color shapers they're really good the reason why they're good is because you can just wipe your masking fluid off afterwards so again great at putting thin marks on and sort of I'm not sure about larger areas actually you might as well test that out there we are might get a nice effect it looks like it's got a nice little technique going on there yeah and then I put a little stem through there and yes you can actually what I quite like doing is letting this dry and then you just peel it off it's even easier it's a bit mucky doing that so we'll we'll save that for later so there's some of the ways that you can put on masking fluid and I hope the protecting your brush has helped this has been maybe 15 20 minutes it's still wet I get asked that question a lot how long does it take masking fluid to dry it all depends on how thick you put it on the pen is very thin and dries very quickly and the pot it's because it's slightly thicker it's wetter it just takes longer to dry which um, if you're going to use it which I would say is great you've got to make sure you put it on advance not when you want to get painting when your masking fluid is like that whatever you do don't let your brush touch it then because over here it's still not quite dry so you don't want it to catch your brush I would say just let it dry naturally you can then paint over the top with your watercolor washes and then blow dry there try not to blow dry the masking fluid dry because if you do so it can prove difficult to remove it at the end of your painting however once your masking fluid has dried naturally you can use a hairdryer to blow dry your painting afterwards when you're removing your masking fluid make sure it's a hundred percent dry give it a quick blow dry just to be on the safe side otherwise if there's any dampness in your paper what will happen is you could possibly tear the paper or smear and smudge the painting so make sure it's absolutely dry the other reason masking fluid may tear your paper is the paper may not like masking fluid I know that sounds ridiculous but some papers they're very sensitive on the surface and they just don't like masking fluid so when you're taking it off it just rips the paper I definitely recommend Winsor & Newton's Artist Watercolour Paper, Saunders Waterford Watercolour Paper and Arches Watercolour Paper. They are more expensive brands but they don't seem to mind masking fluids. That's just my recommendation. If you're not sure, just test them out measure twice cut one I've got another really good tip for you here as you can see there that daisy where I applied the masking fluid it's still wet in places and I want to start painting what I would do is just do that I know it's a bit but you're just taking it off with your tissue it's not the end of the world you can use a little bit of paint there but it's just to get you painting it could have taken up to another hour I haven't got another hour so you know that's a good little tip there so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to paint a lovely green background for my daisies and wildflowers so I'm just using a little ultramarine and a little cadmium yellow what you could do is you can just wet the surface as well first of all everything's dry and as you can see here the masking fluid just resists it all so you can paint quite freely over the top and it protects the white paper underneath so it's quite good because obviously in watercolor painting we work light to dark and we want to save all our light areas so here goes i'm just going to start dropping in look at that it's lovely just drop in these colors wet into wet have some fun all these lovely daisies and wild flowers got a bit of quinacridone gold there I'll use that as well actually doing something like this because you're just playing is quite nice actually it might put a bit of pink in there as well a bit more so really so the other thing is a good little 
well not a tip as such, but the whole idea when you're using masking fluid, okay, there's no point putting a really pale colour around it because the whole idea is you want it to show up. So you need to have contrast. So you want, don't want to put too wishy-washy a wash. Make sure it's nice and strong so then your, your, your light will appear. So that's important. It doesn't have to be too, too dark, but strong enough. So I'm going to let that dry. So the painting has dried. And it's amazing how different it looks than what it looked like when it was wet. What I'm doing now is I'm just removing some of the globules of paint on top of the masking fluid. You don't want that to smear onto your paper when you're removing the masking fluid. I usually use framing tape to take my masking fluid off, but you can use masking tape as well. So I use this, that, that's the sticky side. Sticky side down and just start pulling off your masking fluid. As you can see, I used that shaper for this, which was this, which I've got the masking fluid on here. But you can just peel that off. There we are, it's all nice and clean, as promised. There, so that's why it's quite nice using these. However, I think for large areas, I think it's much better suited to a brush because that's, that's very patchy here. What I quite like about this is it gets rid of all your mess. It gets stuck onto the tape. And there we are, that's the framing tape. You can also use a rubber to take it off. So you can just use that and it takes it off as well. You get a lot of mess there because obviously you've got your rubber and you've got the masking. But it does, it does, the, it does the job. It takes it off, that's the important thing. And the other thing you can use is your fingers or thumb. Now what I like about the thicker stuff is sometimes if you put it on really thick, you can just sort of grab it and pull a whole piece off. I don't know if I'll be able to do it, didn't put it on thick enough, but um, it, it comes off quite easily. Look at that. So that's all, all so far has been with, what I've taken off so far has been out of the pot. So that's been quite good. Just gonna, and as you can see here, this was the bit where I took off the, the um, I pressed the masking fluid off with the kitchen towel so I still it still managed to be okay and the coverage this was with the brush and the coverage is really really good so I'm really pleased with that now this is the masking pen that I spoke about there so I've left that to last because it is to me I find it the hardest one to take off but the quickest one to dry and the least messy so this is with the rubber so that's coming off with the rubber but you can see it's a, it doesn't come off as quick. I prefer to take it off with the tape because it, it leaves less mess it, and it, it stops it from getting too smudgy. So I'm just using that. It's come off okay actually, and that's the stem there. So what you do now is you just start painting your picture. You reserved all your light areas, all those tricky thin lines, and you can just paint on top. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I really hope you found this tutorial useful and it answered most of your questions. If you have any more questions, please put them in the comment section below this video and I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. If you like this tutorial and you'd like to see more like it, why not subscribe to my YouTube channel and you'll get updates of my latest videos. Thank you again for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.